when we look at what made Rome rise to dominate Europe in the classical age and leave such a legacy in our modern world, the key is not its location or its natural resources. The keys in Rome's the keys are in Rome's institutions, namely the government of Rome. Rome overthrew its last family kings, the Tarquins, in 509 BCE. In this place, the Romans established a republic. What is fascinating is Athens also overthrew its tyranny in 510 BC, almost simultaneously with Rome. The only difference is that Athens formed a democracy. It could be argued that both Rome and Athens rose to such greatness because of their forms of government. There are definitely other factors that play, play a role, like the individual leaders and economic institutions. But both cities overthrew tyrants in the late 6th century BCE and established a former government that included a much broader swath of population. Neither of these governments were perfect, but they both took steps to include more people and in control their lives and freedoms. It is this liberalizing of governments to include more people that I think is the key to how both cities grew to dominate the culture of the classical age. There's obviously a counter argument that can be proposed. Can we take this liberalization of governments to an extreme? Yes, we can. If we move all the way to anarchy, where there are no rules and people can do whatever they want, there is no control and no combined effort to tackle society's biggest challenges. So there's a sweet spot of government where the government exercises control and the people are largely free to do as they will. Our founding fathers recognized this. They knew that there had to be a government while the people also had their freedom. The US government, like the ancient governments, hasn't been perfect, but it did give us a framework where the government has control and the people are free. All governments evolved. Rome's Republic lasted arguably until Sulla declared himself dictator in 82 BCE. You might also argue that the last it lasted until Julius Caesar declared himself dictator in 45 BCE. You could also argue that Augustus reestablished the Republic and it lasted another 500 years until the falling of Rome in 476 CE. Or that the Republic of Rome lasted all the way till 1453 CE, -E CE, only ending when Constantinople fell to the Ottomans, ending Eastern Roman Empire. The point is that governments evolve, they rise and they fall. And all the while, the ideal government somewhat depends on our own biases. My bias is not for a total democracy. I think that democracies can de quickly devolve into mild rule. Likewise, I don't think that authoritarian governments have the right mix and control. Anarchies are out of the question. Anarchy is just one step away from a war and an, author an authoritarian government is altering itself again. The Roman Republic quickly changed. Within 30 years, it once again expanded the role of citizens within its government and brought plebeians, the common people of Rome, into a formal governing body, the House of Plebes. As we shall see, the government continued to change ultimately until it ultimately ended. The government of the United States also changed quickly. Within 15 years of declaring independence, the United States abandoned the original form of government, the Confederation of States, and adopted a constitutional republic with a federal system. The United States gave more control to the national governments, national government, and the U.S. Con government continues to evolve. What are your biases? What do you think are the right mix of government to serve and protect the people? There are no right answers. There are just better answers depending on your, what you value, freedom or control. Talk to you later. I like my shop. It's nice down here.